Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a new product slash model showcase video for this 1.6 scale M100 Jeep trailer. This model here is the newest addition to the EastCoastArmory.com full 3D printed 1.6 scale kit line. In this video we'll be going over the trailer itself as well as the kit components as well as the features that this model has. Now this, as well as the other kits, are listed on the EastCoastArmory.com product lines and can be found in the links in the video description. Now as for this model here, this model is one of the first production samples and is built for my own personal collection and is not for sale and or purchase. However, like I often mention in these build videos, I often take on commission build projects from models ranging from 135th scale all the way up to 1 6th scale. As for availability and pricing information, this information will be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around the model. And this model here is the M100 quarter ton trailer. The M100 was the next successor to the original Bantam style trailer, which was developed in the previous decade and saw widespread service during World War II. The real genesis of this trailer here dates back to the late 1940s and early 1950s. And it really has to do with not necessarily the trailer in itself, but also with what tows it. Of course, the quarter ton Jeep, which was extremely successful during World War II, did have some shortcomings to it. Once the war ended, there was some further development put into this platform to improve some of these shortcomings. The first vehicle to come out of these improvements was known as the M38. The M38 was basically offered the same performance as the World War II Jeep, but had better horsepower, as well as a few other little improvements to the design compared to the older World War II pattern. While in addition to this brand new quarter ton vehicle, the trailer also received a little bit of an upgrade. Now the overall design of the trailer didn't change all that much from the Bantam trailer from World War II as that trailer was pretty solid design wise and if it isn't broke don't fix it. However during the war there were a few small critiques that were noticed on the original Bantam style trailer and some of these critiques went into the new redesign on the M100. In addition to the small little redesigns, there were also new manufacturing techniques which were developed during the war, which speed up construction time, and these features were also to be utilized on this new trailer as well. Finally, because this trailer was specifically designed to work with the newer M38, some of the M38's features had to go into this unit as the M38 was unable to tow the original Bantam trailer from World War II. These smaller design changes would include the addition of little grab handles on the exterior corners of the body. These made maneuvering the trailer a little bit easier, as well as also gave some extra locations for tying down extra equipment. Another change had to do with the addition of an extra drainage hole on the inside portion of the trailer's main body pan as well as the handbrake lever being completely redesigned with having a ratchet locking style system as well as using more stampings compared to the design found on the earlier Bantam pattern trailer. The new M100 was also to utilize a new design for taillights as the old stamped steel taillight design from World War II were being replaced in favor of new cast aluminum units which were to be a staple on post World War II American vehicles. The taillights are really part of a bigger electrical system which was one of the key differences from the M100 compared to the earlier World War II counterpart. This again had to do with the M38. The reason why the M38 could not tow the original World War II Bantam trailer was because of the design of the plug socket. The Jeeps from World War II utilized a large Bakelite socket that had the copper electrodes which were exposed to the elements. Because of this, they could get wet and corrode very easily which would cause the brake lights not to work which is definitely less than ideal specifically in a convoy setting. 
when the M38 Jeep was developed, a new socket plug was designed where it was self-enclosing and it would prevent the copper electrodes from any sort of moisture to get in, which can cause corrosion. These new corrosion-resistant plugs were utilized on the M100 Jeep specifically for, again, the M38 usage. Probably one of the coolest features that the M100 had, though, was the ability to adapt from either M38 or World War II Jeep usage. Because both M38s and World War II Jeeps were still in the inventory and were going to be used intermixed with each other, the ability for the trailer to be towed by either one of these vehicles was definitely something that was going to be needed. To do this, the M100 trailer featured a socket plug and an adapter cord which would be used for either M38 usage or for Willie's MB Jeep usage. While one of the cords is being used, the other cord would be stowed on the trailer itself in a small enclosed locking box which would be mounted on the front portion of the trailer. The M100 trailers were again very prolific and were very successful just like with the earlier design. These units here saw service with the US military from the early 1950s throughout the Korean War period all the way up until probably the 1970s. They were up in production up until probably the late 50s early 60s when the production switched to the M416 trailer which is a topic for another video. Now let's go ahead and take a step back to when the model was first started in order to get a good idea on what the base starter kit supplies you with. And here's the model at the start of the project. For the base starter kit I'll be utilizing the 1-6 scale 3D printed M100 trailer kit from EastCoastArmory.com. All of the kit components are strewn here on the table. Now the kit is comprised of predominantly 3D printed components. There are no cast resin parts found on this kit or any of the other ECA 3D printed full kits that are found on the catalog. The only parts that are not 3D printed would be the cast rubber tires, the drainage plugs, as well as some other bits of metal hardware. We'll be going over all these bits and pieces momentarily. The first bit of detailing to start with is this fret here of reflectors. Now these reflectors here are the same ones that are used on the other version of the trailer and are comprised of a runner here with the reflectors that are 3D printed. These are printed with HD material and as you can see are translucent in their coloring. This is done on purpose to first, first of all give you nice crisp detailing for the finely printed details that are found on these sections here, but also when it comes time for painting of these parts, if you when you paint the backs of them with the red paint, it really gives a nice realistic glow to these pieces that really makes them shine. Like I said in the other videos, these sets here are actually sold as an aftermarket component and are, can be acquired separately in case anyone is working on refitting an older Hasbro G.I. Joe Jeep trailer or even one of the older 21st century Mutt trailers and you want to give a little bit of polished job to the surface detailing but you don't want to splurge on the entire trailer like I have here. These again are found on the ECA soft skin catalog page which the link is found in the video description listed below. Moving from the reflector now brings us to the electrical plugs. Now the trailer does plug into the Jeep's electrical system in order for the tail lights to function. The M100 was no different. The reason for these plugs here has to do with the fact that the M100 was really designed to work with the M38 Jeep. At this time, the M38 was a brand new vehicle coming right off the production line, and the M100 trailer was meant to be paired with that new vehicle. One of the many differences and improvements that were made to the M38, as opposed to the old World War II pattern MB Willys Jeep, had to do with the electrical socket plug. Here we have the original plug, for the World War II pattern Jeep. Now these plugs did work very well. Unfortunately, one of the complaints that they had had to do with the way the electrodes and the prongs are found on the plug. If you'll notice that these pieces here are exposed to the elements, which obviously in real world setting leaves a lot of room for dirt, debris, and oxidation to form on these contacts. If anyone has a real trailer, 
you'll they'll tell you that you ha really have to keep these contacts clean or else you're not going to get the electrical circuit to go into the taillights and that in a civilian mindset means you're going to be ending up with a nice fat ticket on the road for a military setting it's not really that important but the convoy use is still important to have the taillights fully functional now one redesign that was done was the setup that we have here. Here we have the M38 pattern of socket. On the real unit, this entire piece is over molded with rubber. And the prongs are actually, if I get that into focus, you can see that the prongs are sunk inside of the plug and are protected from the elements. To protect them further, you'll notice that there is an elaborate little hatch and clasp mechanism found on the top. And on the real unit, there would be a spring-loaded hatch that would keep the unit completely encased when not in use. Now, the component here, again, is fully 3D printed and has all of their detailings for the male, the female plug, as well as also the little hatch. The hatch is designed to be functional to give the most amount of realism to these pieces. Now, even though these trailers were intended to be used for the M38 trailer, or I should say the M38 Jeep, there were still a humongous stockpile of old World War II pattern Jeeps that were still in the inventory and still being used at this time. Now, obviously, the two units are non-compatible. So, the designers anticipated this and came up with this solution. The M100 trailer is unique in that it has an option of two different types of plugs. One plug is for that of the M38 Jeep, while the other plug is an adapter that hooks the Jeep trailer up to the World War II pattern of Jeep. That is why on the ECA kit here, it is supplied with both patterns of plugs so that you can make both types of extensions. Now in order to change out the plug to whichever Jeep you're using, that's what this little mechanism that we have here is. This mechanism here is a receptacle and is a plug itself and this is what's connected to the chassis of the M100 trailer's frame and is what allows you to switch between the two types of electrical plugs. Again, like the other pieces, all of their detailing is found on these sections here and of course once the unit is fully painted you'll see this in more detail as I go on with the video. Now moving from the plug takes us to this lid that we have here. Now because the trailer utilizes two types of extension cords in order to connect to the electrical circuitry you need a place to contain these two cords or else it's going to be very easily lost and that's definitely something that's less than ideal. So the M100 has built into its box frame a small sheet metal containment box for the use of storage of these two plugs. Now the main box, you'll notice, is going to be integrally printed to the main trailer body, but here we have the top lid. Unlike the trailer, which is made from the standard material, the lid is actually high def. It has all of its pressings found, including the way the sheet metal would be curved in the way it's formed. We have here the little latch section. The unit is fully, or I should say printed to be drilled out, so no dremeling is required. And now connected to this is a small little clasp. The clasp that we have here is the protective flap for the socket found on the frame of the M100 trailer. Just like with the main extension cords, there is a flap that protects the electrodes from corrosion, again, when not in use. Moving from the hatch brings us to the other detailing found on the trailer. First and foremost are the taillights. Now the taillights that we have here are the post-World War II pattern. You'll notice that these ones are different in their overall appearance compared to the earlier legacy versions, which were rounder in shape and did not have this exposed flange for mounting fasteners. Of course, there are two that come with the unit, and you'll notice that these are hollow printings. Just like with the World War II pattern, the post-war versions are designed so I could put an LED in in case the unit can be patched into an RC system. Just like with the other unit, the base themselves are printed in standard material, but the lenses are in HD. 
again for the light emitting reason. You'll notice also that their detailing is complete with the bracket as well as their fasteners. And the units have two little pegs in order for them to plug into the main trailer body. Now just like with the World War II sets which are sold separately, these units are also added to the EastCoastArmory.com product line in case anyone has a need for post World War II US AFV taillights, either for a mutt or any other type of application that one might think of, the sets are available. Now from the bases here you can see the actual lenses. The lenses are very similar to the World War II pattern cat's eye, but just have some smaller slight tweaks in them. First and foremost is the easy access of the faceplate via a row of fasteners that we have that we have here along the edge. And again, all these are integrally printed to these pieces. Now, just like with the the reflectors, these are meant to be painted on the inside, so you do get a nice realistic glow of the piece once completed and being clear will help with light distribution if a LED system is patched in. The other unit here is the blackout version and again all of its appropriate detailing is found on the printing. From the tail lights this now brings us to the safety chain hooks. Just like with the Bantam Pattern T3, the same pattern of hooks were retained, and this is the same set found on the other version of the trailer made by ECA. Now, one addition that was found on the M100 that was not found on the earlier renditions has to do with this little fret that we have here. These here are small little grab handles, and these are actually would be mounted along the edges of each of the four sides of the Jeep trailer. This was one addition that was made to the M100 which definitely separates it from the earlier T3 pattern from World War II. The piece is printed in again HD material and has its correct shape with its mounting brackets as well as also you can see the shape of the handle itself. On the row unit this would be stamped out of a single piece of sheet steel which gives you this curvature shape that we have here. From the small little accessories now takes us to probably one of the most important pieces of this kit which are the wheels. Obviously you can't be towed anywhere if you don't have a means to do it. Now the wheels are different from the World War II pattern of trailer in that these rims here are the M38 type pattern. The M38 Jeep utilize a different rim pattern compared to the earlier versions of the American Jeep and the pattern is actually very similar to the 1941 unit. In comparison here I have a rim from a, the ECA 1941 Jeep wheel set and you can see how it's almost identical to the one found on the M38 with the exception on the M38 there are small little slits found along the edge from the center rim and on the 1941 pattern it was completely sealed off. Now also behind the scenes on the ECA one there are the interior rivet detailing as well as the matching detailing on the reverse side. However of course once the tires are fitted and by the way the tires do come pre-fitted on the ECA sets all of which the ones for the trailer and even the ones that are sold separately come with the tire pre-configured on so the rivets are not really appreciated but the detailing is there in case you know, anyone wants to know such. Now because this is an M100 trailer, it would be more appropriate to have the M38 wheel rims on compared to the earlier M1941 pattern. Now the pieces themselves, like I said before, are included with the M100 Jeep trailer, but are also sold separately in case anyone has a need for replacing the wheels or doing some kind of conversion of a Dragon or similar 1.6 scale Jeep. The pieces, like I said before, are comprised of two parts. We have a 3D printed rim with a cast rubber tire. The rubber is very durable and is capable of radio controlled use. The only piece that is not found on this unit over here currently are the little valve stems. These are added after the unit is painted and the valve stems do come with the sets, both their separate versions as well as the ones that come with the kits. The valve stems are also made out of cast rubber and once added really give you that nice little bit of detailing that is commonly overlooked on other models that are seen in this scale.
Moving from the wheels now brings us to the metal hardware. First and foremost, we have a steel rod to be used as a axle to connect the wheels to each other. There is some length of wire to be used for the various details and control rod fittings that need to be made. There is a spool of electrical wire for the tail light connections as well as also the extension cords for the main sockets. A length of real metal cable to be used for the detailing on the brake lines. Two small washers. Of course for the wheels to give you a little bit of standoff from the printed of the rim and it gives the model a nice little roll to it. A spool of small thin wire for the use of tying the chains to the pieces as well as also to be used to fabricate the little mini spring details for the little clasp hatches that we have here on the plugs. We have two metal eyelets which are used for the little drain plugs which again are supplied with this model and are made out of cast rubber. Some other small bits of, again, small lengths of wire to be used on various other purposes. Oh, there is a, a small pin. This pin here is to be used to hinge together the lid for the storage box found on the front of the trailer, which I'll get into in a minute. We have two sets of springs. The bigger spring is to be used for the main lunette, and the smaller spring here is for the two drainage plugs which plugs that will go over in a few seconds. There is also a length of chain of course for the safety chains and a few small little other pins to be used for the hinge mechanism on the clasps as well as a bolt here to be used for the pivot for the stanchion leg. With all of the small little bits and pieces now out of the way it's now time to get to the main event which is the main trailer printing. Just like with the World War II trailer that was recently released, the M100 trailer here has as many components and details integrally printed on as possible. This does twofold. First, it simplifies and cuts down the amount of needed parts in order to glue on, and it also makes the build go by a, a lot faster and much simpler, as in there's less pieces that need to be really built by the builder. This is true for the exterior detailing, but also for the under frame detailing that we have here. Now visually it's almost identical to the World War II pattern trailer, but there are some slight differences that really will escape most people unless you're a, a diehard Jeep trailer fan, or if you've really been studying these things for the last year and a half to find this, most of the small minutia. The number one difference between the World War II Jeep trailer and the M100 has to do with some of the smaller fittings. Now both the M100 and the T3 utilize a leaf spring suspension that has shock absorber assists here in the back. All this is the same. The difference though is that on the, on the World War II pattern Jeep trailer there's only one drainage pole. However, on the M100, they changed this where they added a second one here on the front. This is why, if you noticed before, during the part listings, I had two of the cast rubber pieces, while on the World War II pattern, there's only a single unit provided. Another slight change to the trailer's design is over here in the front. If we look here on the frame, you'll notice that there's a cutout in the shape of a half moon. On the World War II pattern, this is actually a triangle. Again, it's one of those slight differences, but it is a difference nonetheless. This is found on both sides. And just like on the World War II pattern and on the of the ECA kit, the frames are completely hollow. Just like they are on the real unit. And again, all of this is integrally printed on. Some other differences have to do with this section over here. Like I said before, the unit had that changeable connection plug point, and this is the socket where it would be found. 
the HD material one will get mounted on the inside portion here. And that little clasp hatch gets mounted to these two little lugs that we have here integrally printed to the top. Another difference has to do with the handbrake. The entire handbrake design is very different from the World War II counterpart. They went from that small, thin, stick shift type design to this swooped, bent, sh stamped unit. In addition to the unit, there's also a small little ratcheting gear mechanism that is found in this section over here. That, of course, once mounted, will be positioned on this mounting plate. The mounting plate is also very different compared to the earlier World War II counterpart. Moving from the handbrake, this now brings us to the storage box. Now, like I said before, because of the changeable connection plugs, they need to be stowed on the trailer at all times, which cuts down on the chances of the pieces getting lost. And that's what we have this little box here for. Like I said before, the box was just a simple sheet metal box with a clasp that was mounted to the trailer's body. Here you can see all of the detailing found on the part, including the way the sheet metal would have been folded. As well as the way it, the box is actually fitted to the mounting rails. The mounting rails themselves, I believe, are spot welded to the trailer's body. And there are no fasteners found on the inside, or at least from the examples that I was able to find. There's a small little clasp here. The clasp is integrally printed and is designed to have the detailing affix after the piece is constructed, of course. Even on the inside portion of the box, we have the inner portion of the mounting fasteners. From the box, this now brings us to the inner portion of the trailer. Now, this basically looks the same compared to the World War II unit, but there's a small little fitting change that is worthy of mentioning. Like I said before, the M100 utilizes not one but two drainage plugs found on these two opposite ends. The one difference with the design is that on the World War II pattern, there's a small little dip and dish type stamping found in the bottom plate, and that's where the rubber plug would be seen and it's left totally exposed. On the M100, the number one of the smaller changes they made was to add this little protective strap that we have here and tie it into the rigidity rib. More than likely what happened was that the piece while being exposed was susceptible to damage or possibly preemptive opening from stuff being thrown inside of the trailer bed. So when the designers were coming up with the M100, they addressed this issue. This is found on not just one, but both of the drainage plugs. And since the pieces are integrally printed to the main body, no needed assembly or construction is required by the builder. And here's the trailer now fully completed. Let me go ahead and bring the camera in closer to show in more detail the features that I mentioned earlier. But now that the model is built, you get a better idea on how they work. Now to really help me illustrate the detailed differences between the post-war M100 and the World War II Bantlam pattern, to compare and contrast, I actually have my 1-6 scale Bantlam pattern Jeep trailer right over here. Starting with the frame that holds up the lunette mount, you'll notice that on the M100, the portion here has a half circular cutout. In comparison, the World War II Bantlam pattern the same cutout was there, but rather than being a half circle, it was a triangular cut. This is also true for the opposite side as well. Now, both the lunette and the stanchion are exactly the same on the M100 and work in the exact same manner. Now, on the ECA kit, this is just like true for the World War II version, the lunette is spring-assisted and the stanchion is fully retractable. By pulling out a pin, the unit can fold up and tuck away its retracted state. From the lunette cluster brings us to the safety chains. These are identical on both the World War II and the M100 counterpart. Now from the whole lunette cluster and safety chains now brings us to the handbrake. This is one location where the M100 is very visibly different compared to the earlier Bantam. So much so that if I pan over we'll start with the Bantam. The mount that connects to the frame is this tombstone shaped bent angle piece of, well, and the real one would be metal. 
And then we have here a stamped sheet metal assembly for the handle with this tubular section and the button that releases the lock is on the top. On the M100, the design is radically different. First, the tombstone shape plate is gone. There's now an angular bent L bracket that has been designed. The entire brake lever design is very much different. It's still comprised of stampings, but the design is different in that instead of having that button that's on the top, the button is now on the section over here and it works where you grip it and then you could release the lock and then move the handbrake up and down or left and right in this case. But what's also very interesting on the M100 is that there is actually a geared plate that we have here that's sandwiched in between the lever and the angle plate. What this does is that this gives you gradations to set the handbrake while on the World War II unit it was either all or basically nothing. On the M100 this gives you a ratcheting type motion and it lets you adjust the brakes accordingly. From the handbrake cluster now brings us to the power cord. Now of course this is very different compared to the World War II unit where on this section here there's absolutely no provisions whatsoever for any sort of the power cord. Instead the power cord just runs along the frame of the trailer's body and emerges from this section over here where the wire then spools up in this section. Here we have our receptacle plug. On the M100 this is very much different and the plug is actually removable. The M100s have this little extra bit of complexity where there's a socket built into the frame and if I remove the plug here you will see the socket in better detail. Now in addition to the socket to prevent any oxidation from happening there is this small little latch that we have here and this is actually would be spring retained on the real unit. On the model it's just it's just pinned in place. And so now you could display the unit in both closed and open mode. Now as for the plug here we have our World War II pattern of Jeep adapter plug. This is what can, this is the new or I should say at the time the new pattern of AFV plugs. On the real unit this would be rubber and again there would be the spring retained little clasp that would fold down and pr protect the little prongs from any sort of oxidation and damage. And on the other end we have here the World War II pattern of G plug. This is the same printing that is found on the World War II unit. But the difference is that now we can have a place to store it and that's what this little box is over here. Needless to say the World War II one is completely absent of this provision and this is one of the main differences on the M100 pattern of trailer. Opening up the little box reveals the other adapter inside. This one here would be for the M38 pattern of Jeep or what eventually would come later on the M151. Here you can notice that both of the plugs are the same pattern. The only difference is that one unit is a female and the other unit is a male. Little copper prongs have been painted and this detailing is all supplied again with the ECA kit. Now to hook this up this end here would plug into the socket and once plugged in I can now go ahead and make this for an M38 if an M38 were to ever show up in my collection. Moving from the storage box now brings us to another fitting which I believe is more standardized on the M100 as this is a bit of detailing that I really haven't found on any of the World War II Bantam pattern of Jeep photographs and that is of these little corner handles that we have here. Of course there are one for each of the corners on the 
trailer and they all get mounted in the same location. Now of course compare that to the World War II unit and it is just not present. If anyone however does have any information on these handles, if they were in fact used on the World War II Bantam trailers, be sure to let me know in the comment section and I may also offer them as an upgrade to anyone who purchases the World War II ECA Bantam trailer kit. From the grab handle and this now brings us to the tail light. Now here you can see the post cast version of the tail light now fully painted and completed. This of course is the blackout section and the standard red section is found on the opposite side. Now in comparison here we have the World War II version which on the real unit would have been stamped steel again compared to the cast aluminum variant found on the post-war design. From the lens face brings us to the rear portion. You can see how the wiring is hooked up. This again is a mirror image on the opposite side and the wiring is included with the ECA set. From the taillights this now brings us to the interior portion of the bed. Now the trailer beds are basically identical with each other with the exception of the drainage plug. Here on the World War II counterpart you can see the drainage plug detailing in closer view. If you notice, the plug itself is exposed. There is this little concave section over here, which of course will help water pull up in this section and drain out. But as for the crimp lines, you'll notice that they stop at this point here, and this bed only has one of these drainage plugs. Note there's nothing on this side, and it's only, again, exclusively found in this corner. While on the M100, the design was altered in having not one but two of the drainage plugs, like I mentioned before. And also you can see, compared to the World War II one, how they are now protected with a small little shield that has a raised section of the stampings. This again is the same on the opposite side. This is also more appreciated with the units flipped upside down, where you get to see the under chassis detailing. Now the brake line setups are identical between the M100 and the World War II Bantam. So is the leaf spring and axle assembly. The big change has to do with the, again, the drainage system. Now the drainage system itself is the exact same design and the exact same components as the one found on the World War II unit. And working the exact same way. The only difference again is that on the M100 there are two of these units. Now the piece is fully functional as they are on the World War II counterpart in our spring bound, just like I showcased in the the video for the, the World War II Phantom trailer where I poured water in the bed and I was able to drain it out via these plugs. Just like with the World War II unit, the M100 can roll very nicely, which is great for anyone who is intending to use this in a raid control vehicle. The material is more than durable enough to be able to stand up to the rigors of RC driving. Now from the underhull details, this brings us to the paint and the markings. Now if you notice, this trailer here is painted with a much darker shade of olive drab compared to the World War II counterpart. This was done on purpose as towards the end of the 1940s and into the early and mid 1950s, the Army moved from this type of olive drab to a more darker shade like we have here. The markings that you see are just decals from my spare decal bin and we're just rummaged together in order to complete the markings that you see on this model. When it comes to markings and their placement, really there's a whole lot of artistic licensing that can be had by the builder since there were so many of these things that were made and markings tend to be all over the place. Now of course the trailer is cool in itself but it's really meant to be part of a package. And what is a trailer without something to tow it with? And for this video here, we have my tried and true World War II Dragon Jeep. Now, of course, for anyone who's a fan of the channel, this Jeep has lately been in a lot of these videos since I have been doing a lot of towable accessories lately. Now, for the hookup, this is pretty straightforward. The lunette goes into the tow pintle hitch. Now, this tow hitch here is not the stock Dragon unit. Instead, is the ECA Rest and Counterpart to put it in. First I got to retract the stanchion leg, which like I've stated before, you pull out a small locking pin, the stanchion leg hinges upward, and then 
with this small little pin, you re-plug it in where it needs to go, locking the stanchion in the retracted state. Once retracted, the unit then connects to the Jeep's tow hitch, and then the safety chains go on the little safety chain eyelets, which are found on either side of the tow hitch. Now, while on the tow hitch, it's important to point out that the unit that we see on this model here has just been phased out and is no longer in production. The reason for that is quite simple, that now, instead of the Resin Legacy set, there is a 3D printed tow hitch now that replaced and phased out the older one from the product line. Now, this unit here is a pre-production sample and is non-functional. However, if you look in the pictures that I'm posting below, the actual production units are fully functional in that they can lock in both the closed or the open state. They also have on them their little eyelid details that we have on either end for the safety chains to connect to. Also included are brass fasteners for securing this little device to your 1-6 scale Jeep. And while on the subject matter of tow hitches, in addition to the GPW or World War II pattern tow hitch, since this is an M100 trailer and can be towed by an M151 MUT or an M38A1 pattern Jeep, I have here the other pattern of tow hitch, which would have been present on those type of vehicles. The safety chain hooks will just clip onto these two sections here, and unlike the other unit, where you only get two of the brass fasteners. With this one here, you get all four in order to affix this to your model. Now, this unit here is actually full function. This is a production piece. And the way it works is you'll notice that in the closed state, it is locked in position. And to open it up, just like the real one, you grab these two little toggles on top, you lift, and then this will be able to hinge the unit open. You could even lock the setup in the open state just like the real counterpart. The tow hitch lunette would go in here, lift the little latch, close it, lock it, and you're now ready to go. This, along with the World War II version, are found on the links listed below to the EastCoastArmory.com catalog. Now, in case if anyone's wondering, is it accurate for a World War II pattern Jeep to be towing this post-war design trailer? The answer is yes. Keep in mind when these trailers were developed, they were intended to be used with both the older legacy World War II pattern Jeep, as well as the newer M38 and eventually M38A1 Jeeps, which were in development. The one feature that makes this possible is the switchable electrical plug that I mentioned before. Overall, I'm really happy on how the build turned out. This was a fun little side project that was very interesting in finding all the small little detail changes that progressed from the World War II version and made it onto the post-war counterpart. The build went through without any sort of hiccups and was a very fast model to assemble. And once it's completed, it really has a nice little place in the collection. These models here are great just for basic shelf display or for a small little miniature vignette diorama to enhance some figures. Of course, if you have a Jeep, something like this would greatly be appreciated if it was being towed behind. Although it's not World War II, it can still be utilized for Korea, as well as the area in between World War II and the 1960s, in which there's a lot of interesting vehicle and figure combinations to be developed, but it's just one that is basically ignored since it kind of falls in between the gap of the World War II time frame and the Vietnam era. This would also greatly fit into anyone who has a Korean War collection as well. And with that, that wraps up this new product announcement slash model showcase video for the 1-6 scale 3D printed M100 trailer. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel, which is the best way to keep up to date with new posted content, whether it be project update videos, model showcase videos, or in this case, new product announcement videos. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, there are more photographs of this particular build, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been posted in the past. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com, where there are more smaller and larger scale builds and detail components, not to mention the full 3D printed kits that I have here. Thanks for watching.